action is not going to be effective for separation, we have to do like successive um, extractions. With the successive ex extraction, you are using the same extracting solvents and you're doing multiple times of the, of the extractions. Each time you will get some of the, the organic acid into the aqueous layer. So I'm going to measure another 10 milliliter of sodium hydroxide and uh, bring it back to mix with the ether layer. And shake it and blend it into the fume hood. Do this like three times. We place it back on the stand, collect the second extraction um, solution into the same beaker, the receiving container, which is the beaker here and drain it off without getting any organic layer into the beaker or receiving container. Okay, perfect. Um, to make sure there is no leftover of sodium hydroxide in the organic layer, I'm going to use um, some distilled water, 10 milliliter of distilled water, and wash the organic layer with distilled water. What it does is going to remove any leftover of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to combine this washing solution also with the same sodium in the same container with the two portions of sodium hydroxide solution. And the two layer has formed, try to, to mix it and vent it. Um, so after um, two, three times venting, the um, separated funnel, now I remove the, the stopper let the two layers form. And after the two layers form, clearly I will drain off the water or deionized water and left any leftover of sodium hydroxide. Making sure that no organic layer would get in there and stop it right there with one drop. I have my aqueous layer, but it must be um, labeled so I don't make any mistake with the waste can container. So I'm going to put this as the aqueous uh, layer. As long as you know that is the aqueous layer. You can put it like benzoic acid or you can just put the aqueous layer. The organic layer is kind of cloudy. That means that some droplets of water still is in there. Trying to remove maximum amount of water, we can wash this with saturated sodium chloride. So I will add 10 milliliter of sodium chloride and wash it with sodium chloride to remove the, the moisture from the uh, organic layer. So for the sodium chloride, especially the sodium chloride here, I will measure 10 milliliters. First, you have to transfer using a beaker. Measure 10 milliliter of the sodium saturated sodium chloride solution. So it's just to remove leftover or as much moisture as, as possible. 
We went it into the fumet and I'll be back. Organic layer got more clear and we hope that most of the moisture has been, has been removed. Can wait for the second layer to form. And when the second layer um, forms, I can drain the sodium chloride solution. I don't need the sodium chloride solution, so I'm going to drain it into the waste container. We drain the bottom layer or aqueous layer, which is the sodium chloride into the waste. Right solution was separated. What we have now in the beaker, we have the aqueous layer, which contains the, the organic acid, which is the sodium salt of the benzoic acid in aqueous layer. Uh, we have that. And we have the ether layer, which contains the organic neutral uh, compound. Even though we wash this with the sodium uh, chloride saturated solution, but still there might be some moisture in there, I'm going to transfer that into Erlenmeyer flask. So I know the Erlenmeyer flask contains the um, ether layer. To remove and to make sure to remove all moisture from the organic layer, going to add anhydrous sodium sulfate. How much, and normally students, they ask, well, how much should I add? I would always say enough. How much is enough until the, the anhydrous agent, it doesn't clumps up. Like you see here, this area, the anhydrous sodium sulfate has clumps up and is not moving. But on the other side, we do have some, as I rotate, that they, this, it's moving. So when we see we have, we have some moving part of this anhydrous agent, means that they did not clumps up because if there is moisture, it would absorb and it would make a paste or clumps up. Now they are moving. We have enough of the sodium um, sulfate, which is the anhydrous agent. Now, going to cover this with paraffin and wait a few minutes for the uh, for anhydrous agent to work. What's the job for anhydrous agent? To remove all traces of water or moisture from organic layer. I can start with the, with the aqueous layer or I can prepare my um, beaker, label it, because I have to, after it dries up, I'm transferring into a clean, dry, uh, pre uh beaker. So I'm going to label the beaker, measure the mass of the beaker that is, is labeled. And after the three to five minutes, when the sample is dried, I transfer and decant into the, into the beaker. Measuring the mass of the empty beaker. I have the mass of the empty beaker now. And to avoid long videos, I sometimes pause the video and then I continue. It has been five minutes already. I do have clear ether layer. I'm going to decant the liquid portion. Decant or decanting means that you pour off the liquid without letting any pieces of solid to transfer. So I would decant the liquid, which is the ether layer, into the beaker without getting any, any solid. If the solid is not settled like nicely, like the way we have here, you could also use filtration. But since it was nicely separated, I didn't have to do filtration. Now I have the ether with the neutral compound here. I placed this container inside the fume hood for ether to evaporate, and we see the residue 
which is the uh, neutral compound. So I'm going to place that inside the uh, fume group here. We place in the fume group, and it's going to take some time, which we do need that time to work on the uh, aqueous layer. What do we need to do for the aqueous layer is to acidify the aqueous layer. Acidify our aqueous layer, I'm going to take about six to seven milliliters of the uh, three molar hydrochloric acid and pour it into the aqueous layer. So with the hydrochloric acid, it's really not crucial to have exact volume to the last drop of the sample. So I'm just saying about six to seven uh, milliliter of hydrochloric acid. And I will add that to the um, I will add that to the aqueous layer to make sure the aqueous layer is is acidic. When we acidify the aqueous layer, the organic acid is going to precipitate because organic acid is only soluble in the sodium hydroxide solution because it's in the soluble form of that of that compound. See the white crystals has formed, but to make, make sure the, the crystallization is complete, we want to make sure that the solution is acidic. So I'm going to use a drop of this liquid and place it on a pH paper in a watch glass and compare the colors. If the solution is acidic, this paper is going to change to a red color. It doesn't show like a red color, that means I need to add some more of the um, hydrochloric acid. About two to three milliliters more of the uh, hydrochloric acid. Mix it and test it again. Piece of pH paper, drop of the solution. Okay, the red color of the pH paper indicates we have acidic solution. So the amount of the acid added is sufficient. Now, solubility is directly proportional to temperature as we talked about it during the last experiment. So for complete crystallization or precipitation, we place our crystals in ice bath. So I have this copper pot with ice, going to add some deionized water or water in general. Ice mixed with water is more effective than just using ice. Yes, it, the contact is better. So the icing is going to be more efficient. We leave it for about five minutes for the temperature to reach to low temperature of the ice pack. And then we are going to vacuum filtrate or we separate the crystals using vacuum filtration. So